Hey everybody, what's up? Ernie Costa here. Today we're going to be looking at Azure Stack HCI single one node cluster deployments. Uh, this is a recently new introduced feature in 21H2 and forever going on now. I think it was uh, introduced GA maybe about two months ago. Uh, very exciting, very cool uh, options you get here. Um, you can use this for a small branch office, or you can use this as your home lab, or just like a test bed to, to play around with HCI if you've never touched it before. You also get significantly um, more lenient uh, hardware requirements. So in other words, you um, I think you only need like a minimum of two disks in your storage pool, uh, excluding obviously the operating system drive, um, which makes this a lot more economically obtainable for folks to play around. So, and th th that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So the next couple of videos in this video series are going to be looking at it from that real world perspective of, hey, maybe you've never touched uh, Azure Stack HCI before. Maybe you're unfamiliar with even Windows Server and S2D. You're just like, hey, uh, maybe I'm a VMware shop or maybe I I'm just looking for some kind of uh, hypervisor, hyper-converged solution all in one appliance, so to speak. Uh, single node is, is a fantastic solution for that. So in our example, uh, and for this video's sake, uh, we're going to be adopting that premise. We're, we're not going to be using validated hardware or anything for this, for at least for this video today. We're not going to be using an integrated system purchased from a vendor or a, har uh, a supplier or anyone like that. I am literally grabbing an old desktop that I have lying around that has a bunch of SATA slots uh, available inside of it uh, and enough of a, uh, a beefy enough power supply that I can power a couple of hard drives, which with SSD, that's not really a concern, but still got to say. So uh, you can see right here, I have uh, this, this old desktop uh, and I threw in two, uh, two Intel SSDs. I, I did use data center, uh, or I should say, uh, enterprise grade drives here they're not um they're not just uh consumer grade ssds they are actually uh intel dc series drives um with power loss protection plp in them so we will get some realistic storage numbers out of that that, that you should be experiencing uh, we've spoken about that in the past and there's plenty of documentation available about why you should not be using consumer drives for uh storage spaces direct but uh, for this case, we, we got some we got some SATA based SSDs, uh, and that that's it. We're just going to roll with it. Single NIC, one gig for the management. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. We're going to get this baby up and running as if it's a, uh, a, a regular old school single node Hyper V server, except Azure Stack HCI. So you get all the cool things with it. So for my build to test out the actual hardware. I went ahead and uh, grabbed an old desktop that had a bunch of SATA ports on the inside and enough space and power to uh, install two hard drives, um, two SSDs, two Intel data center SSDs that have PLP, that's power loss protection, very important. Um, just to uh, just to demonstrate the 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 ease and 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 speed that you can get this up and running in. Um, the next picture you see here is is me taking with my cell phone camera the the actual okay the os is installed now we have to you know obviously do updates but also get drivers and all the fun stuff like that it is windows server core uh type of interface you know there is no gui for azure stack hdi um so you got to be comfortable with with command line for those first couple steps uh especially if you're doing this like with a home lab or, or test equipment all right, so once this is up and running, I already peed in. You can see I already have the, the server joined to my domain, homelabernicasa.com, and it's got the name uh, Azure Stack HCI A01. Um, just naming convention is important, pay attention. Um, so we're going to drop down to shell, get out of sconfig, and demonstrate, you know, hey, my, my SSDs are actually installed here. We got the, the two Intel. SSDs, I think they're like uh, 700 gig. Let me let me run the command again. It's full, full, little big window. Yeah, it's about 800 gig per SSD. The Samsung is where the uh, the OS is installed on. So we got our physical disks. They're installed. The minimum for single node HCI is two disks. So that is exactly what I did. Um, and then with single node, I'm also only doing a single adapter for management and all of our uh, our VM uplink for now. You know, there are no other nodes, so you don't need storage network. 
uh, but this is important to kind of be aware of for scaling later. So the first step to getting HCI installed through PowerShell is, uh, is installing all the roles that are necessary. And a lot of this, almost all of it, is in the Microsoft documentation page, so you can kind of copy and paste along. Uh, installing things like the DCB, uh, the Hyper-V role, obviously, fell over clustering, NetATC, deduplication, BitLocker. Um, these are all things that are, that are obviously a hard requirement for HCI, um, and this will require a server reboot, which will go very quickly. Now I am already peed in. We're gonna skip ahead a bit here. The server has rebooted. I'm hopping back into it. And all the roles are installed. The magic of video editing, we can we can kind of time shift a bit here. So the, the first step is to make the cluster uh, and specify no storage and specify the IP address of the cluster. Even though it's only a single node, you still need a uh, IP address. So the, the node itself is dot 31 and I am, um, I'm using dot 30 for the actual cluster object itself. Uh, and I have a slash 24 subnet. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna just toss it in there. I'm throwing the verbose flag in the command just to kind of see the output as it goes along. Uh, you do not need that final command, that final parameter, but it's always nice to kind of see the guts of what's going on, especially if you're using PowerShell. Uh, just like any normal cluster, it's gonna, it's gonna rip through, it's gonna make the CNO, it's going to, uh, create the virtual object, the cluster object in the domain. Uh, and you can see my cluster's created, Azure Stack HCI CLA. All right, so once the cluster's created, we still need to enable storage spaces direct. That's done by running the uh, enable cluster storage spaces direct commandlet. There's a couple different aliases for that. Uh, the important thing is that last parameter at the end, cache state disabled. Uh, single node does not support uh, SBO cache. That's that. That's a nice way of saying that single node only supports a flat type of storage pool right now. So you're either going all SSD, all NVMe, uh, but you can't have a uh, like a NVMe cache tier sitting in front of uh, SSD. So uh, cache state disabled. We run get storage pool to make sure we see the full thing. We do. We see uh, a storage pool of the uh, the two times eight hundred. So that's like one point six terabytes. We're gonna we're just gonna add this cluster to Windows Admin Center real quick, just to demonstrate um, some of the nuances with with Windows Admin Center. Um, WAC is um, currently, as of uh, August, suffering some bugs. Uh, that are in both WAC and in the operating system itself. I know Microsoft has said repeatedly that they're working on fixing it, um, but I, I'm, I'm doing this just to show that I'm not like a, a WAC hater uh, or, I show, or a PowerShell lover, which, which I am, I am a PowerShell lover, but I, I do wanna show if you were to add this cluster now that has S2D enabled to Windows Admin Center, what it's gonna look like. So we've added it, we've authenticated ourselves. You'll see there's, there's you know, the Azure connection isn't isn't registered yet. That means that the cluster has not been registered to Azure, which is something we obviously got to do. Uh, if we flip over to the volumes tab, we're not going to see anything because there are no volumes created yet. But we do see on the disks inventory tab that there are two disks there, just like we saw before. Uh, so yeah, this this has worked. At this point, you have a you have an Azure Stack HCI cluster that just has not been registered yet. So that's going to be our next step. We're going to we're going to go and register this cluster. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that it doesn't work through um, Windows Admin Center, uh, at least the way I'm doing it. And and you've heard me before you talk about RBAC and, and least privilege and just in time. Um, I'm running I'm, I'm doing this all through an RDP session and I'm running this as a non domain admin user. So so what does that mean? That means I am. Uh, I'm, I'm running these commands as a user who doesn't have the ability to like do things like, like, like I'm not a local admin on the box or anything like that. And, and, and WAC doesn't like that. It complains. You, you can see I'm, I'm, I'm literally logging in with my Azure global admin account, which is fine. That's great. But when I go into Windows Admin Center to try to register the cluster itself, uh, I'm getting this access denied message. And again, I'm getting this access denied message because the Windows user I'm logged in as manipulating WAC is not a local admin or a domain admin or anything like that. Irrelevant to how WAC is connected to the cluster, irrelevant to how WAC is trying to register 
the SPN app registration in Azure itself as my global admin in Azure, but the, the user I'm manipulating Windows Admin Center as in the browser, uh, the, the RDP session that I am logged into, Edge is like, nope, you are not able to do this, access denied. So what I'm doing here now is, is I'm, I'm going through and actually going to register it through PowerShell. So uh, prereqs are to install the Azure Stack HCI module, which I think comes built in now to, uh, to uh, Azure Stack HCI, like the base OS. And then I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going through a couple steps here. I'm going to, I'm going to cut this up to save some time. Um, I'm, I'm running a series of commands, or I should say I'm running the register Azure Stack HCI command with a bunch of parameters that are required for it to be registered. Uh, subscription ID, Azure AD tenant, resource group name, yada, yada, yada. So, so I, I, this is all available on the Microsoft documentation pages for HCI. Um, I'm just showing it here just to give you a, uh, an idea of what it looks like. So again, you can see tenant ID, sub ID, resource group name, uh, a region, obviously. So uh, Azure Stack HCI is only available in a few uh, regions. Um, and I get to this point now where I need to authenticate with this uh, one-time password code. So I'm, I'm already logged into Azure here and I'm popping in the code. Great, cool. You wanna make sure we're, we're registering this with, with your account you're logged into Azure with. Flip back over and we're gonna watch this. It, it's gonna get the notification that it's done. There it is. And now the commandlets are just gonna register it in public Azure. Uh, this is gonna uh, take a couple minutes. So we're gonna, we're gonna skip ahead here. You're gonna see this kind of jump um, as, as everything gets registered as ARM does its thing in Azure. So for, if you were to run this, this can take a couple minutes, don't freak out. And then when completed, we're gonna get some verbose feedback from the commandlet, should be coming up in a second. There we go, saying result success, and it'll give you the, uh, the, the Azure portal direct URI if you wanna copy and paste it in, and you can go find it in your portal. Uh, so at this point, the cluster is registered. We're gonna, we're gonna refresh WAC here. You can see it's still loaded from before. It said not registered. We hit refresh, and it'll come up with a green check mark. There it is, Azure connection, status connected. So at this point, you're golden. Uh, hey, it's registered. And uh, if you go into the app registrations of your Azure AD tenant, you'll actually see a couple, couple things in there. You'll see the 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 Arc object created. You'll see the uh, the the cluster object, the SPN for the cluster itself. And we'll go into more detail in another video one day about like what those are, what they represent, why they're important. Uh, if we go into Azure Stack HCI. We can actually go in and see the, uh, the, the the metadata associated to the single node cluster. We could see the, you know, the manufacturer, the model, the serial number, the number of cores, which is what you get billed on, what build of Azure Stack HCI it's running. Uh, and there's other, some other cool things in here. Uh, you can do whack through Azure, which is kind of cool. We'll talk about that another time. You can register some extensions in here. So uh, that's gonna be additional functionality for your clusters. Uh, you can you can add Windows Server subscriptions here. So if you don't want to do volume licensing uh, and like uh, software assurance for multiple years, you can just pay per month. It's a little more expensive this way, but you can do it. Uh, look, we we got a cluster. Let's let's like do something with it. Let's make a couple volumes um, and let's like turn on deduplication and see how it works. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make a couple 100 gigabyte volumes here. Um, I'm gonna make two of them for. VMs for virtual machines, and they're going to be called uh, VM01 and VM02. They're both going to be 100 gig. And you can see I'm, I'm throwing a parameter at the end called uh, provisioning type thin. So that's how you, on, on newer builds of storage spaces direct, um, that is how you specify thin provisioned volumes versus uh, the, the, the thick provisioned uh, volumes. Uh, so great for home lab, great if you, if you don't have a lot of storage, but you need to show that there's a lot of storage there. It's also uh, it's kind of beneficial with deduplication and, and you'll see that in a few minutes. I'm also gonna make a third volume here, also 100 gigs called uh, template 01, I guess we'll call it. Um, this is where I'm gonna put like over the course of time, like ISOs and and sys prepped VHDXs and things like that. Just kind of like like a, uh, 
a staging ground for for things so i can rapidly um rapidly create from and clone from all right so to enable deduplication you need to call enable dedupe volume uh specify the volume by its uh fully qualified path so in this case c colon slash cluster storage slash vmo1 and specify usage type so there's a diff couple different usage types uh for vms uh, and, and data that's like VHDXs and things like that, the usage type is uh, called Hyper-V. Uh, so we're gonna enable that on VM01 and template01. And there's a reason for that. I want to demonstrate after dedupe jobs run kind of like what the, uh, what the difference is, just, just, just to show you. And um, if we flip back to WAC real quick, I wanna show now, now that it's enabled through PowerShell, you see the little toggle there actually says deduplication enabled. And if you're wondering why I didn't just toggle it here in WAC and enable it here from WAC. Uh, the toggle doesn't work right now. And the, uh, <laughs> at least in August, problem is uh, we don't, <laughs> the WAC team has said there's some bugs in the OS. So the API for, for this type of stuff in the operating system itself, uh, the, the WAC team has also said that there are bugs in WAC itself. So I, I can't tell you specifically why it's happening. I can tell you that the, the most recent public build has this problem. And uh, some some private previews that are getting tossed around the community. Uh, I, I've seen some similar issues, so I'm not sure when it's going to be fixed, and that's why I try to stress all the time, like use PowerShell. All right, so so dedupe is is on. It's working, or at least I should say it is enabled on these volumes. Um, we're going to. Um, I've I've already kind of copied some some data onto this template 01. Um, again, through the magic of video editing, you didn't see it, but th there's a couple of VHDXs on it. I think there's like 20 or 30 gigs worth of data on a couple of VHDXs. So by default, dedupe jobs run on, uh, I think they run like every hour. Um, I don't feel like waiting an hour, so I'm going to manually kick off the dedupe jobs through PowerShell. So what I'm doing here is saying, uh, give me all the dedupe volumes and start an optimization job on them. And it's going to yell and cry. Um, I, I, I don't know why there's an error. Uh, I don't know what that error code means. However, I do know that if I, um, <laughs> there's a couple different ways you can get out of this, but I have always found that if you see this error upon the first time you're trying to run a dedupe job, if you just restart the dedupe service on the host that is causing the problem, um, it just works after that. So we've restarted it here and let's kick off an optimization job. And Come on, there we go. There, no errors. Optimization job queued up. And if we double back to Windows Admin Center, eventually this page will refresh and on the top you'll get a little modal, a little uh, notification saying that the DJ job is running. So we're gonna, we're gonna kinda again, do some video editing magic here uh, to, to just kinda speed things up for you. Um, in PowerShell, you'll see all, if I run get dedupe job, I see that a job is running and it's at 14%. And WAC doesn't represent that immediately, but um, it, it, is, it is running and it's moving pretty quick. It's at 23% already. Yeah, not, not a lot of data to dedupe. And now you can see the modal on top finally refreshed. So wh however, whatever their logic is, the percentages, I never understand why the, the WAC dedupe modal says nine percent but it's really at 33 percent i don't I, I don't know if it's because there's like different stages of dedupe and and whack is only showing you know an intermediary stage and powershell shows the overall percentage but yeah those those values won't always be in sync um and the modal in whack there see it just refreshed again it's at 28 percent, but powershell says 50. uh it, it's it's yeah, it's kind of funny. Anyway, we're going to, uh, the two VHDXs I have on there that I'm deduping are very, very similar. Uh, so I, I kind of expect this to dedupe down to about 50%, um, which is which is pretty dang good. And what you should expect in like a VDI-esque environment, um, if, if yeah, you, you can see that there's there's IO, like it's moving. It's, it's, it's heavily reading these disks and writing data to a chunk store. Um, the dedupe 
little toggle switch usually shows how much you save, but and it doesn't. I don't think it refreshes right away. But through PowerShell, you can see I'm um, the last. Uh, it's at 45 percent. Save space about 11 and a half gigs, which makes sense. So dedupe, you can see it's working. Um, awesome for for low latency uh, type of workloads. Uh, maybe like our archive type of things, file servers that aren't getting pounded often, um, and it's it it definitely shines in a uh, in a VDI type of scenario where there's like lots of uh, overlapping VHDX overhead, uh, a lot of gold images that are very similar, but maybe like image one has you know these patches in this software, and image two has this software, but like the guts of the OS are the same, so obviously it's gonna you know it's gonna dedupe nice. Um, Realize that there is a performance penalty when you enable dedupe, um, but again, like it has its place. It works pretty dang well with uh, Flash, especially NVMe. Um, and again, we can get really into the nitty gritty of all this, but I think at this point, you know, we we got a server, we got some volumes, we have dedupe enabled. I think it's time, you know, we, you know, next video we we get some VMs. We actually show a workload going on this, how it can be done. Uh, I think we're gonna do AVD. I think we're gonna. You know, not really worry about the more traditional stuff. We're going to talk about the new, the new hotness AVD on HCI, uh, and and showing how it's done. Always, if you want to reach out uh, and have some questions specifically, uh, there is uh, you know, obviously there's Twitter, obviously there's the YouTube comments, uh, but there is a great community of folks over at the Azure Stack HCI Slack channel. Um, and try to put that into the bottom somewhere, like right here. I don't. Not really a good video editor, so I'll try to shove that in there. Uh, over 2,000 users there, a ton of Microsoft MVPs, uh, folks from all over the place with a lot of experience. So hop on over, uh, and and hey, let's let's talk. This is uh, this has been a great video. Talk to you next time. See you all later.